Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and I've got a new storyline for you guys. About a character that I haven't mentioned to you in past videos as of yet, but at least you'll get to know her and all of her affiliations and such. Her name is Centara, and here is her story. Just bear with me and try to keep up with me as I read this, so that way you could get the full comprehension of the story. Centaur number one, the beginning, created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, July 19, 2015. To begin the story, we start traveling across the central Atlantic Ocean during the evening until we find ourselves on a little-known island locally called Mythos, which is populated with mythical organisms. We then start traveling to a cave with a series of runes on the walls and old-fashioned furniture, old-fashioned furniture where we see a male minotaur named Taurus help his sphinx wife Fix with an urgent delivery of their child. Taurus has light blue eyes, blackish brown fur, long and pointed horns, and is really muscular. Fix has green eyes, flowing tannish gold hair, the head and torso of a woman, the limbs of a lion, the wings of an eagle, and a scorpion-like tail that is capable of launching poisonous spikes. They are the royal king and queen of the island, and they couldn't wait for the new member of their family to be born. Don't worry, Fix. Just one more push until it's out. Now, Taurus said as their new child was finally born. Well, look at that, Taurus. It's a girl centaur with six legs, Fix said to her husband. This story, in case you haven't noticed yet, is about their brand new child. However, after a moment of happiness, Taurus and Fix found that Fix's older sister, Chimera, had entered the room. She has deep red eyes, a scruffy tan mane, a lioness-like face and teeth, the front arms of a lion, the bipedal legs of a goat, has a green venomous snake for a tail, and is moderately muscular. How can you get all the glory, Fix? I deserve to be the ruler of Mythos, Chimera yelled at her sister. Taurus then stepped in front of his sister-in-law and answered, In order for anyone to be the ruler of Mythos, they cannot be genocidal to his or her own kingdom, or all Tartarus will break loose. You better not mess with me, Taurus. I could kick your burrow any day. And they started fighting each other. Taurus is famous for his nearly impenetrable hide and skills of a champion warrior, but when he started fighting Chimera, he found that he has a true rival. After a time of combat, Chimera exhaled a stream of flames onto Taurus, and despite that he was more dead than alive, he still charged at her with all of his might and sent her rocketing until getting completely trapped within a mountain at the other side of the island. As Taurus had his final moments, he told his beloved spouse, Fix, I'll not be able to see our child grow. I'm counting on you to take care of her in my absence, and promise me that she will not suffer as much as I have. I love you. And he finally took his last breath. Do not worry, Taurus, replied Fix. I promise with all my heart to take care of her from this point on. She'll be named Cassie Hippra, or simply Centara. By the present day, we see Centara practicing her fighting skills as she's doing some use with a pair of Excaliburs on some other Centaurians. She now has green eyes, flowing bright auburn hair and shoulder length, is wearing a leathery hazel top, and has a hazelist coloring for her horse half. After her training, she overheard some Centaurians talking about how one of them went to an oracle that stated that Chimera will be coming out of her earthly prison after so long. Worried, Cassie went to her mother's bedroom and told her about it. Mother, there's some bad news. Chimera will be freed from her containment. And that made Fix completely shocked. Sweetie, she's so powerful. Not only does she have brute strength and ferocity, she also has a strong healing factor. What are we supposed to do? And after a few sighs, Centara finally said, I will go and fight Chimera for the sake of my father. Oh, Cassie, she's too powerful for you to defeat, let alone kill. 
You would need a miracle from the Alpha Gods themselves. And Cassie replied, If you love your beloved husband more than anyone else in your life, you shall let me avenge him. I promise you that I won't die from it. And Fix finally said, Okay, sweetie, but you must be careful. She is extremely unstable. And by the next day, Cassie called in a few large groups of Centaurian warriors to join her in her quest. A few days later, an early 20s satyr was exploring in a deciduous forest for his own amusement. He has light blue eyes, curly reddish-brown hair, matching goat legs, the horns of a ram, is wielding a merging of a spear and single-edged axe in one hand, and is carrying a bottle of wine in the other. He was minding his own business until he ran into Satara and saw her face for the first time. Hello there, fellow satyr. I am Cassie, or simply Centara. Wow, he replied. You're so beautiful. I, I'm Jeffrey Pearson, or simply Pan. What are you doing here? Well, hello, Pan. I and my recruited army are traveling to destroy Chimera in order to finally avenge my father's murder. Want to join me? Before he could answer her, a voice called out, Hey, Jeffrey! And from the shadows of the trees, a female satyr with wavy blonde hair, green eyes, light gray goat legs, ram horns, and carrying a, double, a large double-edged axe was walking towards them with a concerned look on her face. What are you doing? she asked him. Well, huff, I'm joining Centaur in the quest to destroy Chimera. Chimera? Don't you remember that she killed our parents? And Centaur chimed in. Are you his sister or girlfriend? I'm his older sister, Betsy. I have to protect Pan in order to keep him from getting killed. I refuse to let our parents down. And Cassie finally said, Well, I'm trying to avenge the memory of my father. If you want to protect him, do you want to join us on our quest? After a few seconds of discouraged thinking, Betsy finally sighed and said, Okay, but only to keep Jeffrey from ending up six feet under. And they joined the group. During their travels, they passed various habitats for many native creatures. They encountered things like manticores, pixies, and warty frogs as big as bicycle wheels. They got directions from talking mushrooms, rested in the domains of some forest women, and a few times dealing with seven-foot-long centipedes. After a few weeks of traveling, Centaur woke one morning and found Jeffrey playing a song on his panpipes. Hey, I didn't know you played the panpipes, Centaur stated. Pan then answered back, Yes, I can. Do you play something? Yes, I do. I play the harp. Cassie answered as she pulled out a golden harp from one of her traveling bags. She then played a luxurious song on it that fully mesmerized him. Wow, I've never heard anything so unnaturally beautiful. Thank you, Pan. And by the way, Cassie continued, the day we first met, you told me how beautiful I was. And honestly, I find you pretty adorable. He then said to her, well, um, then is it okay if I... Yes, you will, hunky, she answered as she immediately kissed him. From that point on, Centaur and Pan became a severe item, despite the fact that Pan suffers from a severe case of alcoholism from the wine. When they finally got to the mountain, they found that a female Martianoid with bionic parts and a willful personality was blasting the rock wall with her nuclear blasts. Who are you? Centaur asked her. I am Mars, or Marissa, ruler of the planet Mars. In the past, I've been defeated by Denstrini, the demonic CEO of the Paranormal Defense. I shall open this wall and release Chimera from her containment. After that, I shall get my payback. Because when I release her, I'll have my chance of saving my people. For the Conqueror, she yelled as she made her fifth blast. In seconds, an outraged Chimera finally burst free. She then noticed Mars talking to her. Chimera. I am Mars, ruler of the Red Planet. My people have been going through an overpopulation problem, and I've released you to help me. Thank you. I'll put that to consideration, Chimera said to Mars, as she immediately betrayed her by grabbing her hat and tossing her across the dense forest. 
After she did that, Centaur commanded her army to destroy Chimera. Unfortunately, Chimera was using her intense power and rage to kill several Centaurian soldiers and leave many more critically injured. Realizing this, Centaura charged at her opponent in full force, but Chimera kicked her onto a thick oak tree, suffering intense fractures on her skeletal system. Finally, I've got my revenge. But as Chimera attempted to make one final blow onto the wounded Centaura, a random plasma bass came out of nowhere and struck her to the back of her head. Arg! What in Tartarus? She roared in pain as she found that the Master and her Blue Man clan arrived within their Sky Carrier, shooting her with a series of plasma weapons. Impossible. I can't get wounded. It can't be. And after countless strikes, Chimera ran out of sight to heal from her wounds. After their successful victory, the Blue Man clan revived and wounded the wounded survivors with handheld healing scanners. After that, the Master went up to Cassie and said, I hope you like that we saved you, ma'am. Here you go. She then handed Zendara a pair of plasma ray guns to her. If you end up battling Chimera again, remember to use these to finish her off. Well, thank you, she answered back in relief that she wasn't killed in the battle. Eventually, Zendara brought Jeffrey to her home to meet her mother. Unfortunately, this new encounter made Jeffrey a bit anxious of her. After a few worried minutes, Pan finally asked, I would like to marry your daughter. She is the greatest organism I have ever known. Is that fine with you? Bix then answered, If you really want to marry Cassie, I'll give you permission if you answer this riddle correctly. Otherwise, your access will be denied. What is destined to live forever, yet is no more than a few weeks old? After a while of thinking, Pan saw some markings of the moon on the ceiling. He asked, Is it the moon? And Fix finally announced, Congratulations, Jeffrey. You now have permission to marry my daughter. On the big day, Cassie and Jeffrey finally got sealed by Goddess, the ruler of the Alpha Gods, with all of their invited friends and family enjoying the ceremony. However, Fix asked Centaura to meet, her, meet with her in private. Cassie, I hate to let this out now, but Chimera is my older sister. What? What do you mean she's your sister? I apologize for not telling you, but I didn't want you to worry. And besides, it's your wedding day. You should be proud of something. After a few sighs, Cassie replied, Well, as long as Hoof doesn't know of this, it will be fine. Since she's now my sister-in-law... I'll never have her find out that she and Chimera are connected like this. That's fine, Fix answered back. After that, Pan and Centaura decided to travel to New York City for a romantic honeymoon, making it the first time for them to ever leave the legendary island of Mythos. The end. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the story that you guys were introduced to and such. I hope it's quite the experience for you guys. And, um... It's your choice, but you could be able to uh, like, subscribe, and comment down below for all of my footages, past, present, and future. It's your choice. And until next time, I'm Leviathan, and hopefully you guys are having a fine Christmas and such. Until next time, in transmission.